I made a lot of mistakes when I bought my first car. It was slow, it broke down a lot, and even though it was cheap to buy, the maintenance ended up costing me a ton of money. So I'm here to help you avoid those mistakes with a list of the top five best first cars for enthusiasts, split into carefully crafted categories. We've got the fastest option, the best looking option, and finally, my own personal choice. And because I know you're a broke boy or girl, all the cars in this list can be purchased for less than 12 Gs. If speed and performance is your top priority, well, you might be tempted by the E55 AMG. This beast makes 469 horsepower from a 5.4 liter supercharged V8, meaning it can accelerate from zero to 60 in less than five seconds. It's pretty cheap too. Used examples go from around 10 to $15,000. Not bad. But if you ask me, the E55 has almost too much power for a beginning driver to handle. Not to mention the maintenance and reliability tax that comes with European luxury cars. Your first car shouldn't be something so temperamental and unforgiving. Personally, I would recommend the Ford Mustang instead. Fifth gen models are starting to be unbelievably discounted, and even the base V6 models produce over 200 horsepower. Plus, because of the dirt cheap repair costs, you're almost guaranteed a better ownership experience than the Benz. Not to mention, it was also offered with a manual, something the E55 sadly lacks. Okay, now that speed is out of the way, maybe you've decided you don't need all that power in your first car. You just want something that will impress your friends with style and stunning good looks. Well, <laughs> fortunately, that's something I know a lot about. And the PT Cruiser might be exactly what you're looking for. That's mostly a joke. Consider the Infiniti G35. It has a 3.5 liter VQ V6 shared with the 350Z. It makes roughly the same 280 horsepower, but it's wrapped in some far sleeker Japanese body panels and given a comfortable leather interior. Not to mention the VQ lineup of motors has a very distinct exhaust note to it. Some people love it. Personally, I hate it, but you can always put on a bigger muffler to, well, try and hide the sound. Also, for the few that have friends, Infiniti also offered a four-door sedan trim for some extra practicality. But if the G35 doesn't tickle your fancy, you could possibly get into a Porsche Boxster for around the same price. But I'll let you know, the exterior on this German Roadster has always been a little controversial with the melting egg headlights. And of course, you'd have to worry about the notorious IMS bearing. No, no, if you're smart, you'll look for a more reliable option than a used and abused Porsche. Lexus has a ton of awesome cars I would've loved to own as my first, but one of my favorites is the IS300. This model has always gone head to head with BMW's 3 Series except in a more practical and reliable package. The early 2000s models shared a 3.0-liter straight six with the GS300, a derivative of the legendary supermotor, which produced around 215 horsepower. A 5-speed manual was added for 2002, sweetening the deal even more. If you want an enthusiast car that can easily do over 100,000 miles, this is probably your best bet. Now, every car so far has been pretty affordable, but let's say you have a bottom of the barrel budget. No judgment, but maybe you only have a couple thousand in your account, or maybe you're just trying to save as much as possible. Whatever the reason, if you need a car under five or even $3,000, the Mazda Miata is always the answer.
Seriously, this car gets clowned on a lot with its 113 horsepower inline four. That's less power than my motorcycle. But it's dead common, it's dirt cheap, and it's supposedly a lot of fun if you get the five speed manual. If you even consider getting the automatic, well, don't, don't even talk to me. Un unsubscribe from the channel. I don't want you here. Okay, so we've looked at fast cars, pretty cars, reliable cars, and even cheap cars. But which one would I pick? If I had the opportunity to go back and buy my first car again, I wouldn't go for any of these. Personally, I've always liked the Acura RSX most. It has the best of a lot of these categories. Reliable Honda underpinnings, an attractive Japanese exterior, and reasonable performance for the price with a lot of tuning potential as well. The RSX replaced the Integra in 2001 and sported a two liter inline four Honda K20, which made around 155 horses and was paired to a five speed manual. The Type S performance variant made over 200 horsepower and had a six speed, but I'd be just as happy to own either one, especially at the low prices they go for nowadays. <laughs> When you buy your first car, I think the most important thing above all else is to realize that it won't be perfect. Most people can't afford a six digit brand new supercar to start off on. And even if they could, it would probably scare them silly with the insane amount of performance. Your first car, in my humble opinion, should be deliberately bad. You probably won't own it forever and you'll probably get a few dings and scrapes on it. So just get something decently reliable that won't get laughed at. Something you can ride around in while you save up and get some driving experience for your actual dream car. But <laughs> that's just my two cents. If you disagree, go ahead and let me know in the comments section. And maybe subscribe so you can correct all my future videos too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.